The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. This is a quote from the incredibly influential author H.P. Lovecraft. He said this quote in reference to the style of horror that he created called Cosmic Horror, or Lovecraftian Horror based on who you're talking to. Cosmic Horror is a subgenre of horror that focuses on the fear of the unknown, or on beings and deities that are incomprehensible and thus drive people insane just by looking at them. Cosmic Horror has gone on to be a very popular genre of horror, with many different films, books, TV shows, music, etc. using Cosmic Horror themes or imagery. I am a huge fan of Cosmic Horror, the concepts and ideas that have always been so interesting to me. So today, my dear viewers, we're going to take a little stroll into the dreadful, unfeeling void of the genre of cosmic horror and come back out with ancient knowledge that may or may not drive us to insanity. There's only one way to find out. So sit back, relax, as I give you a brief history of cosmic horror. Now that we have a basic idea of what cosmic horror is, let's dive a bit deeper, shall we? Let's explain some of the core elements of cosmic horror, the ideas and concepts that makes this genre so terrifying. The core tenet behind cosmic horror is this idea called cosmicism. It is a concept created by H.P. Lovecraft and the very basic idea behind it is that humanity is powerless and insignificant in comparison to the vastness of the cosmos. We are just a tiny speck in the universe that can be done away with at any time. In conjunction with this idea, cosmic horror focuses on the fear and awe of things beyond our comprehension. Beings and hidden knowledge that cannot be described in words is a very common occurrence in cosmic horror. This idea is usually personified in different ancient deities where if you were to even gaze upon them, you would surely go insane. These deities are often old gods that used to roam the earth but are now trapped in a death-like dream state, or in just a different plane of existence waiting for people to free them again. Whether you call them ancient gods, old ones, great old ones, etc., the idea is that these beings are unstoppable forces of nature that are completely indifferent to humanity and will wipe humanity off the face of the universe without a single thought. Now, ancient deities that live in a realm adjacent to ours is commonplace in cosmic horror stories, but they are not explicitly necessary in them. As long as it's something that's beyond human comprehension and that can turn us mad, it is considered cosmic horror. Another core element of cosmic horror that ties into this is the idea of a hidden truth, where if you knew that hidden truth, you would become insane just by knowing it. The idea of a truth so terrible usually has to do with whatever incomprehensible being that specific story has. If you knew the truth behind this being, you will surely never be sane again. The idea of madness is definitely a main element of cosmic horror. Most cosmic horror protagonists are either already insane or assumed to be insane after experiencing the deity themselves or finding the hidden knowledge about said deity. The people who find this hidden truth and become mad usually in these types of stories create a cult to the old god that made them crazy in the first place and will do that god's bidding until they are free to wreak havoc upon the world. These calls usually have an altar to their particular god that gives them dreams and instructions about what to do next to free them. What I love so much about cosmic horror is the concept of being so beyond our human understanding that it will literally break your mind if you try to comprehend it or just look at it. I think my love for cosmic horror started in one of the weirdest yet slightly funny places it could start. I remember watching an episode of The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy when I was a kid, and one of the episodes featured Cthulhu, the most famous eldritch being in the cosmic horror genre. The show portrayed him in a cute yet slightly terrifying way, but it was when my brother explained more about Cthulhu when I really became interested. He told me that if you even look at Cthulhu, you go insane. Just that idea was very fascinating to a younger me, and is still interesting to me to this day. What being is so outside of our human conception of reality that it irreversibly breaks our minds? Well, Cosmic Horror seeks to answer that question, but that leads to another question, and that is, well, what can us humans do about it? And the answer to that question is nothing. The main idea behind cosmic horror is to contemplate humanity's purpose and existence in the face of the vastness of the universe and the unknowable beings that lurk within it. These beings, these gods, are unstoppable and can never be conquered by human means. And that's where the fear really comes in. What will you do when faced with something so unknowable that if it wanted to kill you and all of humanity, there is nothing we can do to stop it. Cosmic Horror has manifested itself in different stories in many different ways. The next section of the video is going to go through a bunch of different examples of cosmic horror throughout the years, seeing how this genre has changed and morphed like the deities these stories often do. But first, you must go to the source, the man behind the creation of cosmic horror. 
a man named H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft was a very troubled and paranoid man. He lived in his hometown of Providence, Rhode Island for the majority of his life, having only moved out once to New York City, but immediately moving back from the discomfort. As a child, he was very interested in astronomy and Greek mythology. He was terrified of the ocean, and after his father died after being admitted to a mental hospital, he lived with his grandfather who often told him tales of winged horrors among other things. All of this to say that it's not too surprising that this kind of guy would create some of the abominable creatures and stories that he did. So let's talk about the man in his writing, to see just how he conceptualizes these ideas, amongst other things. Let's start with The Call of Cthulhu. The Call of Cthulhu was a strange story about a professor who finds a carved effigy of Cthulhu, and in his search to figure out where it came from, leads him on a journey through madness as he is trying to piece together what Cthulhu is and what the cult that worships Cthulhu is planning. This story showcases everything that is great about Lovecraft's writing and everything that's not so great. What's great is his tension and the mystery behind what Cthulhu is and what unimaginable horrors that would happen should he be freed. What's not so great is that the story is told through Lovecraft's very narrow worldview, meaning that the story, like most of his stories, is incredibly racist. Yeah, let's talk about the giant Cthulhu sized elephant in the room. Lovecraft was a very problematic figure whose work was marred by those problems mainly being the racism. Lovecraft was really racist, like more racist than the people he was living around at the time, the time being the 1920s. If you don't believe me, just look at what his cat's name was. No, he did not name the cat this, but he didn't change it either, which is even worse. All of his stories have this duality to it where the concept is very interesting and scary and then things get really racist in classes and it just takes you out of the story immediately. The Shadow Over Innsmouth is a prime example of this. Great premise and introduction to this creepy town and its citizens. And then BAM! Sudden xenophobia and racism. <laughs> How nice. Luckily enough, this only really affects his stories and not the entire Cthulhu mythos they created. The Cthulhu mythos is essentially all of the elder gods and eldritch creatures that he came up with during his career and the stories that go along with them. There are many different gods like the titular Cthulhu, Azazoth, the creator of the Outer Gods, Shubnagorath, Yogg-Sothoth, and several more with weirder names, and some with hilariously simple ones like the blackness of the stars or darkness, like just darkness. <laughs> all of these creatures and deities all play into the themes of incomprehensible beings that are indifferent to human life. And these beings in tandem with those themes often lead to many other authors and different creatives taking inspiration from them. Here's a reason why this video is called A Brief History of Cosmic Horror and not A Brief History of Lovecraft. There is so much more to cosmic horror than just Lovecraft, even though he may have created it. So let's talk about that and the many different pieces of art cosmic horror has created. If we're going to start with early cosmic horror examples, we have to start with the literature and the many stories that inspired Lovecraft and the ones that were since inspired by him. Examples of cosmic horror before Lovecraft are stories like The Willows by Algernon Blackwood. It was one of the earliest examples of cosmic horror where the indescribable horror came from the environment that the characters were in, a river surrounded by willows. An even earlier example and one that directly influenced Lovecraft was the story The Great God Pan by Arthur Mackin about a scientist who performs an experiment on a teenage girl that will allow her to see the god Pan. But after the experiment was successful, she became insane after what she saw, very much in line with a lot of what Lovecraft and later cosmic horror stories were playing with. Other stories around that time the H.G. Giles' War of the Worlds was close to cosmic horror in a way, but not fully because, well, the alien beings can actually be killed and fought against. In cosmic horror, the staple of the genre is that alien eldritch beings are unstoppable that it is futile for humans to try and do anything against them. After Lovecraft kept writing stories such as The Mountains of Madness, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, The Color Out of Space, and many others up until his death in 1937, but his stories wouldn't become popular or influential until a few decades after his death. The publishing house known as Arkham House that was started by pen pals of Lovecraft, Donald Wandry, and August Derelith. In the years after Lovecraft's death, those two published many of his stories various short story collections and novellas. It's not until after this where Lovecraft's writing started to garner more popularity. This is when pop culture started to become more interested in the unknowable forces of the cosmos. One of the first, if not the first film to have cosmic horror elements would be the Trollenberg Terror, also known as the Crawling Eye. It's about an agent from the United Nations who is investigating a series of unusual events happening on Mount Trollenberg in Switzerland. 
the unknowable creature in this film is very similar to the Eldritch Cloud creatures found in some of Lovecraft's stories. In the 1960s, film and television started creating stories with more cosmic horror elements in mind. Roger Corman's film The Man with the X-Ray Eyes is a good example of this because the main character goes mad after his heightened sense of vision allows him to see God at the heart of the universe. Another film of his, The Haunted Palace, is loosely based on a Lovecraft story, The Case of Charles Dexter Ward. Another film in 1965 called Die, Monster, Die is also based on a Lovecraft story, The Color Out of Space. Many of the early cosmic horror films were either based on or were trying to adapt different Lovecraft stories, such as with films The Shuttered Room based on a short story that was a collaboration between Lovecraft and August Derelift of the Arkham House. This trend continues into the 1970s with the film The Dunwich Horror based on the Lovecraft story of the same name. With the cult trying to sacrifice a woman named Nancy and appease the old ones, this film is firmly supplanted into the cosmic horror genre. The film The Picnic at Hanging Rock is an interesting version of cosmic horror. With the use of sexual hysteria in an eldritch location, the film about a group of schoolgirls and their teachers suddenly going missing at Hanging Rock was very provocative and critically acclaimed. It was a very different take on cosmic horror than what was done before, but it still has all the hallmarks of what makes the genre so powerful. In 1979, Two important films to cosmic horror came out and expanded the ideas found in earlier works. Those films were Alien by Ridley Scott and Stalker by Andrei Tarkovsky. Starting with Alien, this film took cosmic horror in a new direction with the setting actually being in outer space. The atmosphere of the various different sets, especially the set of the alien planet, really gives off the sense of impending doom and existential dread that cosmic horror is so famous for. The alien in the film is quite similar to many of Lovecraft's creatures that are unstoppable and have no regard for human life. Alien in this film actually reminds me of the Deep Ones, the eldritch deep sea creatures from the shadow over Innsmouth. The alien is barely ever seen in the film, hiding and skulking away throughout the ship. That dread of a being that can kill you at any time, that you can barely see or comprehend, that there is nothing you can do about it, lands Alien firmly in the cosmic horror genre and makes it a film that pushes the genre forward in a really interesting way. Stalker, while not being a horror film, does land points in the cosmic horror basket mainly because of its setting. In the world of Stalker, there is this ever-expanding area called The Zone, where researchers go to explore and try to figure out exactly what it is, because The Zone is an ever-changing location that seems to shift and rearrange itself at will. The explorers of The Zone see various different indecipherable things that slowly cause them to go mad. Stalker is one of the most famous examples of a cosmic horror trope known as the Eldritch Location, where the land that the characters are in is the incomprehensible force that acts upon them. In the 1980s, Cosmic horror starts to ramp up just a bit with more films and such being written in the style. But we're not going to start there. No, we're going to start with this little known thing, eh, I doubt you ever heard of it, called Dungeons and Dragons. Tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons have had influences from Lovecraft and cosmic horror since its inception in 1974. But we really see that influence in 1980, where in the Demons and Demigods sourcebook, there is a section dedicated to the Cthulhu mythos. While it didn't stay there for long due to copyright issues, Dungeons and Dragons lore and monsters has tons of examples of cosmic horror. Beholders, Mind Flayers, and many other Eldritch Beasts are a part of the D&D lore with many expansions that came later down the line, adding to that fact. Now D&D wasn't the only tabletop game around with cosmic horror elements. This next game is firmly planted in the world of the Cthulhu mythos, and that game is The Call of Cthulhu. Released in 1981, the game is based on a story written by Lovecraft that takes place in our world with Eldritch terrors as Lovecraft would often say that would hunt down the players slowly making them insane. This is even reflected in the gameplay mechanics, where there are sanity points. The more you learn about the unknowable terrors of the situation around you, the more sanity points you lose until you are completely overcome by madness. It was a very innovative idea at the time, that added a further layer of roleplay to this roleplaying game. Call of Cthulhu is still being played and updated to this day, with the latest 7th edition being released in 2014. When it comes to films, there are some major releases that came out in the 1980s that still influence cosmic horror to this day. Some of the earlier releases would be films like The City of the Living Dead and The Beyond by Lucio Fulci, who was very inspired by Lovecraft and wanted to bring the atmosphere and dread associated with Lovecraft to the silver screen in his works. These films also added to the cosmic horror mythos because in these films, it is human negligence and failures that lead to the abominable outcomes and monsters that lurk in the shadows. Right after these films came out, John Carpenter started his cosmic horror trilogy with the film The Thing. Based on the 1950s film The Thing from Outer Space, John Carpenter's version focuses a lot more on the existential dread of fighting against an unstoppable force. That force being the titular Thing in the film, being some sort of alien that crash landed on Earth years and years ago. 
It was then dug up and attacked the research team in Antarctica. It turns out that the thing can shapeshift into any living thing. When the thing is amongst a new research team, they all become paranoid about which one of them could possibly be the alien, leading some of the crew members to become mad. The thing is a classic cosmic horror story done in incredible fashion, easily one of the best in the genre. Continuing his foray into cosmic horror, John Carpenter made the film The Prince of Darkness, where the cosmic horror tropes of unknowable truths driving people insane and eldritch abominations are in full force. Another classic example of cosmic horror done right. Other films in this era were adding on to the cosmic horror genre in various ways. Evil Dead by Sam Raimi for example where a group of college students on vacation start to become possessed by a book called the Necronomicon, which is featured in quite a few Lovecraft stories. These themes are continued in the Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness. The Reanimator is another interesting twist on the cosmic horror genre with a student in medical school who comes out with a serum that brings people back to life, but they are not brought back the same. Many of them turn into eldritch monsters that terrorize people. Loosely based on a Lovecraft story, Reanimator is quite an interesting and shocking watch. From Beyond is another film based on a Lovecraft story and is very similar to The Man with the X-Ray Eyes, although taken in a different direction. Another great film in the cosmic horror canon. Another fantastic example of cosmic horror in the 80s is the film Hellraiser by Clive Barker. In this film, the unknowable Eldritch abominations are called Xenobites that are explorers looking for the most extreme sensations and pleasures. The Xenobites in Hellraiser are indifferent to humans and their suffering. They are just in search of the most carnal experiences, even if it means torturing humans. This also needs to be mentioned because Berserk was released in 1989. I know I mentioned Berserk in damn near all of my videos, but it definitely deserves a spot in the cosmic horror canon. Especially when talking about the God Hand, a group of eldritch beings who control the fate of the world of Berserk. There are also many, many different demons and entities in Berserk that call back the cosmic horror designs of Lovecraft and many other things. Although there is an argument to be made that Berserk is not a full cosmic horror because these demonic entities can be defeated. It may be possible for the God Hand to be defeated as well, but we don't know the answer to that question yet. There is also this series of anime OVAs that came out in the 80s and continued into the 90s called Uroski Doji, a series of mostly pornographic cosmic horror stories dealing with old gods and eldritch abominations. It's a very original take on the genre, albeit a very strange and disturbing one. Some people in the West might know one of these called The Legend of the Overfiend, very famous in the anime community. Music around this time was also adding in cosmic horror elements and Lovecraft references. Songs like Call of Cthulhu and Things That Should Not Be from Metallica reference the Cthulhu mythos and indescribable monsters. Music referencing Lovecraft has been around for quite some time at this point. There was even a band called H.P. Lovecraft in the 60s, but it really starts to ramp up from the 80s onwards. The 90s was an interesting time for horror, since it was around this time where edgy dark stories started to become mainstream in popular culture and cosmic horror was definitely a part of that. Twin Peaks, the popular crime horror series by David Lynch has some elements of cosmic horror within it, especially when the surreal and supernatural elements of the show start to come into play. The cosmic horror becomes even more blatant in later seasons. The final film in the Apocalypse Trilogy by John Carpenter in the Mouth of Madness came out in 1994. It is a very textbook Lovecraft based cosmic horror story about a book that makes people overcome with madness after they read it. This film uses the classic cosmic horror tropes of unknowable knowledge making people insane and by merely gazing at something so incomprehensible makes people insane as well. All of these elements combined with John Carpenter's stellar direction leads to a classic film in the cosmic horror canon that definitely needs to be seen if you're a fan of the genre. More Lovecraft adaptations were still coming out. The film The Resurrected came out in 1992 and was based on the case of Charles Dexter Ward, a Lovecraft novel. The Lurking Fear came out in 1994 and was based on the story of the same name. And in 1999, an adaption of Cool Air came out based on the story of the same name. For more original cosmic horror, video games started to come into play in the 90s. Games like Alone in the Dark made reference to many monsters and abominations from the Cthulhu mythos. There is also the Legacy of Cain series that introduced the Elder God and Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver, where the Elder God is a very similar Eldritch abomination to many of the Cthulhu mythos. It also controls the wheel of fate that is in control of the fate of all mortal souls. A very cool example of cosmic horror in a gothic setting. We may or may not see something similar to that later. There is also some minor examples of cosmic horror that aren't fully cosmic horror like Lavos from Chrono Trigger. Would be a good example, but Lavos can be defeated so yeah, not exactly what we're looking for here. Going back to films for a second, there is the film Necronomicon which is an anthology series based on the fiction book found in the Cthulhu mythos. 
There is also the very famous Event Horizon, where a scientist on a spaceship called the Event Horizon caused a rift in space and time, and what they saw in this rift drove them mad. It's a cool mixture of what was done in Alien with the cosmic horror set in space, mixed with the classic cosmic horror tropes of madness and seeing what should not be seen. Going over to the realm of manga, we have an important work in the cosmic horror genre written by an important man in the genre, and that work is Uzumaki by Jinji Ito. Now many of Jinji Ito's manga can be considered cosmic horror in a sense. Tomie is an interesting example of an eldritch beast assuming the form of a woman who drives many of the men who falls in love with her insane. Many of his short stories can be considered this as well, but Uzumaki is a very special case. Uzumaki is about a small village town that is slowly becoming obsessed with spirals. The people become so obsessed with them that the town starts to slowly become mad and the people are driven to do extreme things in order to have spirals all around them. Some even becoming spirals themselves. By the end of the manga, it becomes a full-blown cosmic horror, with different eldritch monsters roaming around, and the town itself being influenced so much by the spiral, it becomes a spiral itself. It's a really well done cosmic horror story of an unknowable influence driving the citizens of a town insane. Later on, Junji Ito would dive headfirst into the cosmic horror genre with his manga Hellstar Romina, a story about a scientist who discovers a new astral body in space and names it after his daughter Romina. After it turns out that what he discovered was actually a giant living planet that eats other planets and that is making its way towards Earth, people on Earth start to blame the scientist and his daughter. So a cult arises and seeks to sacrifice Romina to the planet so that the world can be saved. This is a much more straightforward cosmic horror tale, where the planet Romina is an eldritch abomination that is completely indifferent to humanity and the different cults that form around it that try to appease the planet itself. On to the 2000s. Cosmic horror stories haven't slowed down in the slightest. When it comes to films, The Call of Cthulhu in 2005 adds another adaptation of a Lovecraft story to the canon. The film The Mist, an adaptation of a Stephen King book of the same name, is very much steeped in cosmic horror elements. A town is out of nowhere shrouded in a mysterious mist with eldritch abominations within it. This film is cosmic horror to a T, with unknowable monsters descending onto a town and there's nothing that people can do about it, causing the people to slowly become desperate and go mad. A very good example of cosmic horror. The film The Forgotten is another great example from this era. The film is about a woman whose child goes missing and everyone in that child's life forgets about him. But after finding evidence that he was alive, she tries to find out where he went and what happened to him. Good use of cosmic horror is found in this movie. The Eldritch Abominations are very mysterious and there's nothing you can do to stop their plans. It's a unique take on old tropes that is done pretty well. AM 1200 is an interesting short film about a radio station being controlled by an Eldritch being. It's one of the more original tellings of a cosmic horror story put to film. Very creepy and chilling at points. Video games received a good dose of cosmic horror in various games. Some of the most notable examples are games like Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Some of the best cosmic horror has to offer can be found in this game. Going back and forth throughout time as we try to figure out the mystery behind the Tome of Eternal Darkness. You visit various locations filled with eldritch beings that eat away at your sanity meter that is the very important mechanic to the game. The lower the meter is, the more sanity effects occur to the characters in the game including some meta ones that makes it seem like you, the player, is going insane as well. From lowering the volume, to fake deleting your save file, all of these things add to the atmosphere of the game and the cosmic horror elements that come with it. The Shin Megami Tensei games have various elements relating to cosmic horror, but the one game that really goes through with it is Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. With the destruction of the world by eldritch beings in the first hour of the game, to eldritch locations that turn people mad, the doomsday cult that worships the eldritch beings, Saturn sits firmly in the cosmic horror genre with some religious horror thrown in for good measure because it's Shimigami Tensei. This space takes very classic cosmic horror tropes and puts them all into one gory limb slicing package. Yet the whole necromorphs thing definitely adds to the cosmic horror elements. But with the introduction of the brethren stars, planet sized cosmic beings that eat other planets and that there's nothing humanity can do about it really sends Death Space over the edge deep into the pool that is cosmic horror. Alan Moore wrote some really cool comic books in the 2000s steeped in cosmic horror. The Courtyard and Yugoth cultures and other gross, the latter one being directly related to the Cthulhu mythos. Both are really great examples of cosmic horror done in Alan Moore's unique, despondent tone. 2010s has some amazing examples of cosmic horror in different mediums. When it comes to films, there are a few notable entries for the decade. Black Mountainside in 2014 is about a group of archaeologists sent to travel to the Arctic North and discover a strange, thousands-year-old structure that slowly causes the crew to become infected with madness. 
very similar to The Thing by John Carpenter, but this film focuses more on the psychological aspects of the cosmic horror genre, and I think that's pretty cool. There is also The Void in 2016, a film about a cult that worships a triangle shaped void inside of a hospital. Much more of a straightforward cosmic horror story with all of the Lovecraft classics. Cults worshipping eldritch beings, those said eldritch beings causing madness amongst the characters, an unstoppable force that seeks to set free the works. All of that is done in a cyberpunkish neon lit film that's pretty entertaining for the most part. Endless in 2017 has a cult worshipping an eldritch being, but without the neon lights of the void. No, The Endless takes place in the country backwards of San Diego. The Endless is kind of a folk horror take on cosmic horror done in a very surprising way. I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a take on cosmic horror that hasn't really been done much. Now for the most famous example on this list, we have Annihilation in 2018, about a group of soldiers from the military sent to investigate this area called the Shimmer, a cloud that has formed over a lighthouse. Their job is to get to the lighthouse and find out exactly what's been going on while avoiding the many eldritch beasts that inhabit the Shimmer, one of the better cosmic horror films of the decade. While there are no cults worshipping an old god, Annihilation is another example of the eldritch location trope that changes an area and is the location that drives people to madness. An entertaining cosmic horror film with a strange open ending that leads to a bunch of theories and interpretations. For our last film, let's talk about The Lighthouse. A film from 2019 about two sailors who are stuck in an eldritch location that is a lighthouse. We watch the two characters as they slowly lose their sanity over the course of the film. While it's not exactly clear whether the lighthouse is an eldritch location or not, it's certainly framed that way. These two sailors are slowly being corrupted over the course of the film by the enclosed space that is the lighthouse, driving them to madness. If you take the film as a cosmic horror, it really is one of the best out there, an absolutely fantastic exploration of isolation and insanity. Alright, let's talk about a few notable games that have come out that add to the cosmic horror canon. Quite a few games have come out over the course of this decade that use cosmic horror or Lovecraftian imagery. It was very common in many indie games, but also a few AAA games as well. Starting with a game like Alan Wake, whose story and setting is very much based on Lovecraft stories and is set in what's presumed to be New England, also known as Lovecraft Country. Because many of Lovecraft's stories were set in New England, it is also where he grew up. Also, the dark presence in the game is an eldritch being from an eldritch location that can never really be defeated, only held back. Dark Souls has some elements of cosmic horror, especially with the existence of the Abyss, an ever-growing dark void that corrupts the people who are near it for too long, and that drive people insane. Just look at Artorias. Also, the darkness of the abyss taking over the whole world is inevitable, no matter how many times you look at the flame. Though it isn't a full-on cosmic horror like another FromSoft game I'll get to in a moment. Amnesia the Dark Descent is littered with Lovecraftian lore and imagery. The plot of the game is very inspired by the Cthulhu mythos. It also has a sanity meter similar to Eternal Darkness, giving it that nice cosmic horror touch of driving the player character to madness. Such fun. Darkest Dungeon is another great example of cosmic horror as you lead a group of adventurers and warriors into a dungeon that contains an eldritch beast that can drive your characters insane. While monitoring your sanity meters and fighting against different monsters, it's an amazing example of cosmic horror done so well. Also, the ending is terribly bleak in perfect cosmic horror fashion. Carry On is a game where you play as an eldritch beast that is trying to escape a research facility. Even though the humans in the game can't harm you, when you get to the end of the game and you are impossibly large and break out of the facility, it turns into a cosmic horror real quick and there's nothing anybody can do to stop you. Soul of Cthulhu is a game based on the tabletop game that is also based on the famous Lovecraft story of the same name. Got all that? Good. Now this game is pretty faithful to the tabletop game, sanity meter and all. It's a really cool way to jump into the world of Call of Cthulhu and immerse yourself in the madness. Alright, it's time for the big boy. The game you've all been waiting for, it's time to talk about Bloodborne. The game considered by many people to be from software's masterpiece, Bloodborne is such an awesome mix of gothic horror and cosmic horror that leads to one of the most interesting settings I think Hidetaka Miyazaki has ever made. The city of Yarnum and the various locations around it are subject to the ire of the beasts, which are humans who turn into werewolves after drinking the blood of a great one, the eldritch beings that inhabit the world of Bloodborne. The cosmic horror Bloodborne is showcased in its various locations and details that make the world feel grounded. Many locations in Bloodborne contain different kinds of eldritch beings, from these weird alien things that turn out to be people who are experimented on. Has its filled to the brim with mangled fused corpses? 
these fucking brain things covered in eyeballs that literally make you go mad in the game. There is also this part of the game where you go down a pit to be met with one of the most disturbing things I think I've ever seen in a video game. And that thing being the brain of Mensis. Just, just, just look at this. Jesus. If you walk into a random church at the end of an area, this happens as well. <laughs> yeah, crazy, right? I'm not even talking about the various bosses in the game. From Mergo's wet nurse, Eberita's daughter of the cosmos, Ludwig the Accursed, all of these enemies really cements how steep Bloodborne is into the cosmic horror genre. Alright, back to those small details I was talking about earlier. There's this really cool detail in the lore of the game that has to do with eyes. You see many of them on many different enemies in the game, and there's actually a lore reason for this. Now, I'm no lore expert on Bloodborne or any of the From Software games, look to Vati Vidya for that, but I've always found the idea of having eyes on the inside to see the truth to be very interesting. It is said that the more eyes you have on the inside, the more of the truth of the world you will see. That is true lore wise and also in gameplay as well. There is this item called Madman's Knowledge that you use to gain insight which is the meter in the game. If you have over 40 points of insight, you can see these things. These are called Great Ones and the only way you can see them is if you have insight or eyes on the inside. See now you're getting it. This is hands down one of the coolest ways to introduce Cosmic Horror into your game because it doesn't even tell you that this happens. You just have to get for the insight and holy shit that was there the whole time? Bloodborne is easily one of the greatest things in the Cosmic Horror genre because of how original it is in showing the horror of the unknowable. The 2010s also led to various memes having Cosmic Horror elements and themes. Some of the most prominent examples being creepypastas like Slenderman, The Quiet Sky, Dogscape which is just Go let that up for yourselves. To various memes like the back rooms, an Eldritch location that is home to various different monsters. Animators like Meat Canyon turning famous celebrities and IPs into horrible Eldritch beings. Amon Hawk turning stupid right wing pundits into Lovecraftian creatures to showcase how stupid they are. The Sonic Dream Collection that puts various characters from Sonic the Hedgehog in cosmic horror and nightmares, with some of the characters turning into Eldritch beasts themselves. But my favorite cosmic horror meme probably has to be the I'm Sorry John subreddit, where the characters of Garfield, yes the orange lasagna loving cat, are turned into incomprehensible beings. Garfield is usually the Eldritch horror that tortures John until he is consumed by madness. This strange cross section of cultures has led to one of the most weirdly hilarious and disturbing things on the internet. It has also led to some incredible artworks by some really talented people. Alright, here we are, the present day, the 2020s. Cosmic horror right now is pretty much a continuation of what was happening in the 2010s but with a few notable additions. The World of Horror is a point and click adventure game that came out in 2020 whose influences are very obviously those of Lovecraft and Juji Ito. It leads to the game having a rich dark atmosphere with Eldritch abominations that would definitely freak you out your first playthrough. Elden Ring also finally came out in the year of our Outer Gods 2022. Elden Ring in its lore has these Outer Gods that affect the lands between from a faraway dimension. These outer gods, including one called the Greater Will, bestowed powers to various demigods in the lands between. While not a full on cosmic horror like Bloodborne, From Software are really into old gods passively affecting the world of the player character. Elden Ring is a phenomenal game, and everyone should definitely play it. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. This video was supposed to come out on Halloween since you know the whole horror thing. But due to various extraneous circumstances, that couldn't really happen. But I'm glad the video is out now so that people can watch it. Hopefully you learned something new from it. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Also follow me on Twitter, I'm going to be a lot more active on there in the coming weeks. Tune in next time for something completely different. Peace.